So, now, at long last, the time has finally come. Is it? What time is it then? It's time for the World Championship Finals of Card Fight Vanguard. Oh, is it? it and actually I heard is. somebody say, is it season one all over again? It seems to be because in the final matchup, we do have the both Overlord and Blasters. So, as for the players that are going to be representing them, yes, please tell we us. We do have Hank Huang, who we did have on the stream earlier. Oh, yeah, playing uh, as Joshua, five. right? Yes. yes. He was in round five, so he's still obviously playing Overlord. So, he is representing North America, we can see on the left. And then we have Herrera Moya Jesus Daniel on the right, representing Mexico with blasters. And we haven't seen Herrera yet on the stream, but he's actually a very well achieved Mexican player. Every single year since 2015, he has topped been first in Mexico in at least one, whether it's Team League or the solo championship. Also, I mean, this is a nice end, end of the day matchup as seen. We see Aichi against Kai. This is essentially what the final actually is, yes. And now we can see he's using the Grade 1 Wingle that we have from the uh, Blaster Legend deck. And so one of the amazing strengths of Wingle is that the moment that it hits, you don't have to actually slide it into the soul until you check that top 7. And only once you've actually found a Blaster, only then you have to slide into the soul. So one of the really big strengths of that is that you can essentially just like poke them. And sure, like, let's say you hit. Yeah. But even if you hit and you check the top seven and there's nothing, you yeah. don't have to slide into the souls. That's one of the really amazing strengths. And I talked to Herrera before uh, before the finals, and he said that, like, yeah, this is one of the best decks, one of the best cards in the deck. And he gets the stand trigger on top of that. This is such a strong start for Herrera. This is really putting quite the challenge on Hank. And he is on the 6K base, so it's quite easy. I think, like, Herrera is really enjoying being able to just bully him with all these attacks coming out of nowhere with the Isn't Wingles. Isn't it some kind of the sort of thing that Blaster Rush do? If he plays Blaster Rush? I think he's having yeah, Blaster of course, Rush, yeah, right? Yeah, he, so is, he just goes for attack on attack on attack. So basically, yep. that's the, the the best thing that's... Not the best thing, but usually what now? The optimal. Royal, optimal, what the Royal Paladin players do. Because it's the optimal also way to of winning, basically. So why not take the, the win home for the Royals again? I mean, that would be also, of course, a great ending, but um, we are neutral to both. Of course, we are cheering on both of these players. So, yeah, uh, I mean, the Overlord, the whole day, so strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw it all the time. I hope that he eventually gets his seven cards as in Overlord, oh, yeah, maybe finding yeah, shenanigans finally, going. Finally, because yeah, Because it would be sad that if he is still, like, not doing so well as finding that Overlord. Also, I mean, I heard from the stream that they like the purple shirt guy, which is me. Oh, I yes. got a new nickname, so purple <laughs> sleeves all over. Let's hey. go. <laughs> so we can see that currently Hank did go into the glow hitter. Let's not forget, obviously, Hank is the third most achieved player in the he world. Is, and he's yeah, about he's to really add good. another qualification to his I mean, come on, list. he's second place or first, one or both. I mean, that's the best achievement you can get at these yeah, world finals. Exactly. With over over 100 players in all of the games, all included together as one. So yeah, kind so of a good end of the day saying, hey, I go home with either first or second. Yeah, which is definitely. just insane as a positioning. Definitely, so yes. let's see if he goes to rise up his avatar. It is the Blaster Blade, oh, Blaster spirit. Blade spirit. So technically, technically, technically there's the Blaster Blade. There you go. Yep. And so he's I just be wanted swinging to say for Blaster 13. Blade. Hey. So he's going for the 13k swing in the Vanguard. We're going to see how he decides to respond. I believe he, he has, has another... four cards in his hand, right? Yes. Yeah, he has another glow heater that he's kind of hovering so over. On the right, you see the the Overlord, as in the Great Free, that he's maybe hitting soon. Of course, yep. not passing that. There's oh. another Blaster Blade going to his And the heal hand. that will and this time healed. go off, although he's nice been one. through two heals. Uh, because he had to drop one early. Yeah. So Herrera actually managed to ask for that one heal for him to drop prematurely. So before he actually... Um, before he actually was able to use that as a, for a yeah, G guard. Of course. So that's now for that's already three blaster yeah. as well. So yep, yep. So there is the blaster blade exceed uh, that he was able to search out with the Wingle Brave because uh, the blaster blade spirit did hit. So that's one of the main uses of blaster blade spirit because of his 10k base. You're able to essentially push for a slightly bigger number on turn two, and if they take it, which normally they would, especially with that kind of early aggression, yeah. you're able to just you know add whichever blaster you feel like. And honestly, like if you're missing a grade three, you add your exceed, and that's it. So, Overlord is finally here. He's going to use the on right skill to Soul Blast one and retire one of Herrera's rear guards. It's going to be the, the critical. Row. Yeah. Yep. And now he's going to be putting the Conroe back. And he hovered over the draw trigger. And he does place it down. And simply swings with the Overlord to the rear guard blaster blade. I think that's the right move. He gets the yeah, stand, stand. Revealing that once again, as we said in ground yeah, five, he does he is, play stand. 
I mean, so, information also for his opponent. I mean, as yeah, in, oh, exactly. he runs stand trigger. Okay, good to know. Good yeah, to know. Yeah, in case you didn't Gets know already. Gets support inside of his damage. I mean, it's okay to get it in there. It's not that he really needs it, is it? It's not the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. That's what I meant. So, so we're going to see how this paces out because he goes into the exceed. So he will be able. Let's see if he does choose to retire. He does retire the Conro. That is most definitely the right move. Yeah. Then um, goes into the stride and goes then into the Gansalot. And so he uses the exceed skill. He's going to be able to search his deck for a blaster and let's check what he's going to take. So it's going to be the original blaster, blaster blade. blade. We should give him some blue hair that he looks like Aichi in this half the match ongoing. Oh yeah. So they yeah. both look like their waifus. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> oh well. What would you say is your most waifu, Kai or Aichi? Hmm. I'm like, okay. Is I'm it okay like, to go with neither? Yeah, it's okay. But I, I would really like Kai Waifu all over. Yeah. But, oh, uh, this is... This is a full field, This so. is quite something. This is quite a rush that he is now Because not only does he have a Gensel, he has so the So attacking with the strike first. Too. Okay, he has four drive checks now going down. It's the first There's one. There's the heal, it's a heal which trigger. will go off as well. Yeah. He can add the power to the blaster ability, which will be restanding from the flow goal. He gets, okay, a bark goal. A flow. Critical, well, that's the crit. that's gonna be quite oh, Jesus big. Christ. This Putting is the damage that he wants to give. Up to four damage, adding the power. He could potentially also add both to a blaster blade because it would withstand, and then he gets the, the perfect PG. guard. So let's see. First damage. It, he did put it to the Vanguard, so that Second. is a two damage. Yeah. Ooh, that's a destiny that goes to the. That's two overlords that go to the damage. So that's actually quite bad because he won't be able to recycle them with yeah. the Doombringer. So, he's now attacking with the first Blaster Blade for just a total of 18k, if I'm not mistaken. But he's still able to... Ooh, Taking the damage. Oh, he ooh. takes it. He's down up to 5 already. This is looking quite bad. He's going to be using the Flow Goal to restand it already. And he's pushing for damage so fast. Can I don't know if Hank No, it's like three cards left in his hand. Can he... Can he, yes, he still I don't has think he can feasibly no, actually manage to protect against this. I think he's just, he's just going to Game 3, basically. Because this oh, is game two, like rather. a... Oh, game 2, sorry. Game 2, because we have a best of 3. But, okay, no, block that. Still Next attack. To. No, he still has the stand trigger. I think he's able to protect. Okay. All right, let's see. He's uh, using the sign trigger skill, yeah. so because uh, he was able to, due to having the low amount of cards in hand, he's able to draw himself an extra card. Didn't even card. think that he could he's manage to get off this attack because it was quite a rush. That yeah, he was getting but that stand trigger. I don't think I've seen many blaster decks playing that stand trigger. No, actually, that's from true. All my I mean, doesn't he go more than crits because, of course, of the rush value of it? But yeah, of course. But also, it's it's also if I'm not mistaken, the brave stand trigger. Yeah. So that's quite so interesting end of the to turn, put that in. We will see maybe then. But again, this shows yeah. just how varied the play styles of just like. A deck like Blasters was just popular which, all which over the world. Which stride would you now play? Would you rather go for like Ace or stuff like that in the standpoint? Honestly, because it's just on he one could damage. Two, but I don't think that Hank, if we remember correctly, I think he only plays two of the Ace. Yeah, so it's he, true. It was, it, was, it was Joshua in yeah. the fifth yeah, round yeah, that played yeah, three yeah. of him. So I don't think the Ace is a feasible choice for him because unfortunately he doesn't play the three counts. So that's in this case, it would have been actually quite good if he played the three of the aces because then he would have actually been able to use that restander on first strike. I think, honestly, it wouldn't have done as much because Herrera is still on one damage. So even yeah. with the restander, you're not pushing for that far. I mean, it, doesn't, so. it doesn't give you every opportunities to put a purge in because why would you purge with yeah. just one damage? It doesn't make any sense. I and of course, he will pay for something he can actually not really use it. So... Um, Thinking still I think of it. Accent Grave is probably going to be the best choice for him. I think so because too. Because in the end, he's really low on cards in hand, and he's got those annoying blaster blades. Retire, on the field. So of there's one the gone. Blade, then and goes for let's the see if he does go for let's the Accent Grave. Let's see which one he takes. It is the Accent Grave. Yeah. So he's going to be able to get himself an extra card in hand as well as retire the other blaster blades. So that's definitely quite good. And now he should be able to also uh, use the Overlord's on strike skill to, uh, you know. We can see if, for once, we can get that top seven Overlord. But uh, the fact that he just had two of them go to the damage zone, and also we saw one in the drop. There's one in the Vanguard circle, so I'm not. It's not the most okay, likely he's scenario. He's digging. But no, he doesn't find he anything. It again. This is again the same thing as we had earlier. The entire not finding, day. not finding that one Overlord that he needs, which is so. Sad. In the end, Seriously. that overlord, not finding that overlord in round five was what cost Hank the game. Yeah, that's basically what I, what I was uh, referring to, as in it cost him the entire game. And do we see just a repeat of that in this game as well? I don't know, but the one good thing about this final is that it is in best of three yeah. formats. Flipping so that even if over. this doesn't I mean, of course, he doesn't need that Sabrice anymore, so flipping that, of course, makes sense. Yeah, of course. So attacks. He gets the extra draw gets from the extra Axe and yeah, still because he's in blaze state. First, second, and Ooh. third. Ooh, hits nothing. 
that's not exactly the right thing that he would have wanted. This is looking very bad for Hank, because right now, the amount of shield value in his hand is not exactly the highest. No, if he goes for the same damage. turn as earlier with a Gancelot, he's basically dead. Like, Gancelot? Just... I'm not sure if Gancelot is even needed. I think no, if he I just don't... goes for the Alfred, yeah. he can also just close it out right there. Of course, there. of course, yeah. I mean, even, even, even both is, is a particularly winner, because he just needs to rush again and just go over. Yeah, what I'm not too sure of, actually, is the count of the original Blaster Blade in uh, Herrera's, uh, Herrera's um, deck, because he will need that for, you know, for actually closing out the game. But he does still have at least one more in there. So he's going to be able to use the Alfred, as uh, we said. So, honestly, I think this is what he needs to close out the game. The Barkle is down Herrera's there as well. He gets the refunded over. counter charge. This is looking perfect for Herrera. Ooh, he's going to activate the Alfred skill to give the drive check to the Blaster Blade. This is splitting this pressure with the Alfred stride is honestly really amazing. Yeah. And honestly, ooh, this is this is honestly quite scary. Because right now for but This Hank, is going to get triggers. Yeah, so. for th that this thing has drive checks, man. Yeah, I said. This yeah. is like what, what he gets. Yeah, exactly. Also, I mean, he has five or six cards in hand. Five, five. So he drops and already two. Four of them are four 5k are shields. Over, so six. I think one of them may be a perfect shield, yeah, like but thinking. I'm not too okay, sure. Okay, this is a one to pass. One to pass. He's gonna check, and he gets oh, the stand trigger. There is. That's gonna be going through, and he gets an extra attack in there as well. And he gets the new, and that's honestly enough. He gets yeah, the destiny and the damage zone, and that is game one. Herrera takes the first yeah. game of this best of three so series. So we have some people in the crowd. Give some round of applause for the first game. Come on, guys. There we go. Hopefully, the viewers back at home can hear that. Okay, so. let's do that. Like Since they are shuffling, who is for Royals? No, clap, come clap, on. Clap, clap. <laughs> who is for Overlord? Uh, <laughs> Not so <all> much right. then. <laughs> <laughs> so, going into game two, now the pressure is on Hank. Yeah. Because honestly, like, it's not looking too good for him. He wasn't oh. able to really draw into anything that game. He did the circle with his. his <laughs> ah, nice and cheeky. The thing is. Different fight just looked into the hole. Oh no. Oh no, so let's not. Did. Let's not. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, quickly just power shuffling Hank's deck. You know, that is important because after all, if he doesn't take, you know, manage to bounce back this game, it's going to be a pretty, you know, he's going to have to settle for second place because Herrera right now is I mean, looking so retiring, solid. Retiring the things helps though, but at the end, he has so much hand advantage, as you saw <laughs> earlier, that he just says, okay, you retire my stuff, you know, next turn I just drop everything that I need again. And yeah, just exactly. attack again. And, and of, of course then spreads out his um, triggers, as in, not triggers, but sorry, but um, what he can actually flip over, as in, you saw with the Blaster Blade just yeah. that. He just says, okay, you know what, if you give me this, I'll just call my Blaster Blade, give him a trigger check, and then just go with it. And then yeah. get the stand trigger or the crit that I need. But then, as you said earlier, a trigger that we usually not see in this build-up, yeah. added to his deck, which is interesting, but maybe we can depending on, of course, if he wins or loses. We can ask why he took that choice. Maybe, of course, in a setup for the day, for yeah, the decks yeah. that he is facing. But yeah, no. uh, definitely some stuff that we can talk about also later in, in the interview with him, if, of course, he wins. Yeah, of but course, we are achieving like, for both because we don't mm -hmm. want to be uh, neutral to, uh, let's say, neutral to both and then wish yeah, yeah, both of the best of luck. But one of the important things, like, honestly, regardless of the results of these finals for Herrera, this is a massive props because nobody would have expected Blasters in the finals of this Overlord and Chaos and Deleter yeah. and Thava's heavy meta. Showing again that Vanguard can be different, as in yeah. the outcome can always be different. Yeah, there can always be some underdog coming through, as now, of course, then with Royals. Not saying Royals is getting bad, but more as in actually going through the whole tournament, now sitting there, stretching himself, getting ready for the next match, and being out 1 0 and elite, which is interesting always to see. Vanguard is not always. At an outcome that you think of. As yeah, exactly. Even though in the top eight we haven't mentioned yet, but in the top eight we had six, six overlords. overlords. Six of them. One Blasters, which is Herrera, and then we had one Messiah deck as well. So yeah. being able to come out all five rounds of Swiss, top eight, top four, and now finals with Blasters is honestly amazing. And he's representing both himself as a player and the Mexican community very well. So we will be starting... The second game, the players shake their hands and we get into it. So, Herrera will be taking turn one and he passes. That is not good. That means he is great stuck. 
without GSS thing. So we get into Hank's turn. Oh, uses the stride support though. Yep. I mean, and he okay, gets the draw, draw trigger, the blaster exceed, blaster exceed, hits the damage zone, and let's see if he drew into that grade one yet. He there did draw, ooh, okay. Also the stride support. Oh, oh, this is a very interesting turn of events. That, okay, we're seeing a similar outcome as the last game. So the Wingles drop down, ooh, the double draw. And now we have, ooh, uh, okay. So the Destiny hits the damage zone. But then going with, I'm not gonna ride, just go for it. And now he's rushing again. Yeah. It's like interesting. I wasn't honestly sure if he was actually great stuff. We were just like letting uh, Hank put on a little bit of pressure on him and then just being like, okay, well, take all my rush after this because these Wingles are gonna be putting in some work. So he goes to the glow heater, reveals the, the, the destiny in his hand in order to secure that 10k base. So let's see what Hank has to do next because I think the top priority right now is to get rid of those wingles because they're going to get annoying. Even though they're just, you know, 7k's, they're still a very annoying pressure to deal with. So he calls out the, uh, the burnout, or the burning horn rather. And let's see what he decides to do next. So he did get rid of the uh, one of the wingles. And now he's going to activate the Conroe to search for any grade one. So he's just confirming in his hands what he already has to play with. And then we'll see what his decision will be. Possibly a strike. We can't really see his hand from this scenario again. But one, oh, he does search out the Conroe. I think that is a solid choice. It is. Um, you know, it's, it's always been a solid choice. Honestly, yeah. Conroe, I feel like it's one, one of the reasons why Overlord can afford to do so many of its plays that it actually does, simply because Conroe refunds that counter blast and allows him to make all those plays later on. Yeah. So, now going through Hank's turn, like he has a lot of things to think about right now. Yeah, also he, he searched for that grade three, which has come insanely later after this turn because of course he wants to go to his uh, overlord state of riding and striding later, which is of course needed. So, going with the destiny. Yeah, oh, we can see Herero is slightly tearing up the bottle over there, but uh, regardless, we can see that um, maybe he's yeah. taking his frustration out on a bottle because yeah. he cannot. He cannot. <laughs> no, it's like the guys are laughing. You have to think he cannot rush right now because he has to wait for his opponent. So that's why he's tearing up his bottle, saying, "Let me rush, please." Yeah, but regardless, we're going to be moving on into the battle phase, and he's going to get rid of that as expected. The wingle hits the back. Gets draw, the draw trigger. trigger. Very good. That's back-to-back -back draws that he's had in both turns. So that's definitely better for his overall, you know, hand advantage for this game. Ooh, the spirit comes down. And, ooh, the Starlight Trumpet, not, not Trumpet Violinist. So let's see, he's gonna be able to search out any grade two. He searches out the Liu. Ooh, this can be quite big because he currently has the Blaster Vanguard, meaning he can actually use the Liu. Uh, he will have to refund that Counter Blast somehow, uh, which might not be possible just now, but we'll see how the game paces out. So, he calls down the Wingle, swings with the Liu on the Evolute. And, you know, he just wants to get rid of his unit. He doesn't want to let him get away with, you know, overextending or anything. He just doesn't want him to get away with anything, honestly. Herrera is playing so aggressively, but he's getting so much advantage out of it, too. His hand may be low now, but if this attack goes through, he's going to be able to use Wingle Brave to search out uh, any blaster from his deck. So that's definitely very important. Yeah, and six-carded hand one right more now. Card, Hank is kind of in a struggle, thinking of, hmm, should I, should I guard this or not? Of course, depending on the triggers that he hits, he might consider it. But then again, he loses the hand advantage. Yeah, Ooh, just he's go gonna for take it. it. He has the Ooh, crit. That is that's very a crit trigger. big. So taking two damage, first yep. one and the There's second. There's the protect orb and the stand trigger. He gets up to 15k base, so that's at least good for him now. But choosing to take that is, you know, is understandable because one to passing it, obviously, it would have led to the crit, and so now he gets the exceed, and therefore, you know, even if he didn't have the exceed in his hand before, he now has ha does have it secured. So. Is definitely looking very good for Herrero once again because so many of the plays he's making, he's able to get away. He's pressuring his opponent so heavily, but still able to get away with it. Yeah. So Hank's turn begins. He draws and will he ride to grade three? Possibly, because what should he do at this standpoint? So it would be the best to just go to level three. Yep. So honestly, I think in in Hank's scenario, it might be best to just go into the destiny. Yeah. And to just try to get rid of that Liu first. Yeah. Because that can become a problem later on, yeah. honestly. Like, once Liu gets going, it's going to be pretty scary. So it goes to the Destiny. Destiny. Let's see. So he's going to activate the skill to Soul Blast 1. His one and only remaining soul. And let's see. This is... He has to make a pretty careful decision because the Wingle is also scary. And it's less... He's going to choose goes. the Wingle. It's obviously less accessible. He can at least go at the Liu with his own attack. Yeah, of course. Of but, course. But, you know, the Wingle, as proven last game, 
is really, really threatening. And this game as well, yeah. he pressured Attacking. him a lot with it. Yeah, see, he does the yep. right attack, goes to Gets the crit, crit, puts it on the Nahalam. Puts it on the right on the Nahalam. Second, nothing. Okay, Against the so protector. It still has 5,000 in crit, so good position to do an attack. But I would rather not go on the Vanguard and just try to do damage, at least giving him the opportunity of losing cards from his hand, like for the opponent, I mean. Because um, isn't mm, left side with the violin is not so... Well, the thing is, if he does attack the Vanguard and he, he takes just this, did. he gets up to four Cannon Blast. And the thing is, getting up to four Cannon Blast, meaning he can do so many more combos. That's that many more Lews yeah, he can do. True. That's also that many true. more Flogals he but can activate. But I think in this, in this point, also, Hank wants to put that pressure on uh, his opponent. Because Jesus yeah. also, you know... Oh, yep. okay. He goes into the Gansalot. He does Gansalot. reveal that he does play the Alfred Oath. So yeah. I think that reveals part of the reason why he was able to advance so far because he has an answer to the Link Joker matchup. Because with yeah. Alfred and the Alfred Stride, he's, uh, well, the Alfred uh, Restricted Stride, he's able to unlock his own units as well. So that's definitely very good. So he does go into the Gansalot Stride, which will refund him a Counter Blast. And now we're going to have to see what he decides to do. And he, ooh, he does retire the Nahalam. And this is very scary. So this is just an 11k swing onto the Vanguard. Six card in Hank's hand. Yeah. So let's see what he can do. I think he's either going to have to consider whether he takes this and tries to soak up a bit of a... potentially get a damage trigger and then try to, you know, guard the rest of the attacks with a little bit less shield value than normal or he's going to have to either protect this one and then kind of bank it on his Vanguard not checking any crits. But honestly, I think you can't really afford to do that once you're already down one game in this best of three finals. Yeah, true. So, let's see, because, okay, he does decide to guard it. Ooh, and he's going rear next again, because he does play those stand triggers after all. Yeah. And that is just so, so scary. Looking at his uh, trigger lineup, honestly, it's... God, like, what can I say? It's it's like his... Maybe Jesus is considering that Hank will not, like, you know, defend himself and just say, you know what, I'll just take it. And then maybe Jesus is then lucky and hits that trigger that you were just talking about. And then restands, of course, his left side, just reattacks again. But uh, maybe he's just, like, playing a bit, not greedy, but as in, I just maybe take it. I don't really actually care about it. And then yep, defend But in the end, the now attack. Griffin is going to come down and get rid of the violinist. So now, Ganslot coming through. We do see the perfect guard in Hank's hands, so let's see what he decides to do. Uh, because he's just confirming his drop zone, any perfect guards that he can use to counter charge with, or you know, any other heals that he can use from his G guard, confirming his G zone, everything. So this is very crucial because, you know, He's on a disadvantage. He needs to get every information necessary that he can. Yeah, to know actually what he can do and the possibility of, do I really need to get rid of my perfect guard? Uh, or not, so three cards in hand for Jesus. We'll be going up to seven at least, however. Will be, will be. So let's see, this is, honestly, this is a very tense situation for both players because Herrero, he looks a bit relaxed, but honestly, like, oh, he's going to take it. This oh, is gonna he's going to take it He gets first. the heal, that's a good start for him. He's going to go down to three damage, able to add some power. He gets the stand, put it off the blaster, exceed. So now, currently, it's at 21k power from the two triggers. He gets the Lian, and now the fourth one is a, critical, a critical trigger. He's putting it up to five damage. He gets a draw trigger. That's quite big for Hank. He's able to add some power to his Vanguard, also get an extra card in hand. Now, on five damage with the Blaster Exceed, swinging for 26k. He has a PG, though. He has a PG. He, he does have the perfect guard. That is true. It. Otherwise, I cannot, I cannot think he can come through with it if he doesn't play it. Yeah, so right now, Hank is in quite the oppressed situation. Yeah, he cannot just go on the heal trigger like, uh, let's be lucky. <laughs> he has to do something. Otherwise, it will be over soon. Yeah, honestly, I think he might even be thinking whether it was a good idea to use the G guard that early because yeah, he but he uses his two crits as a 20k shield. So yeah. mm, maybe, of course, yeah, going to defensive standpoint, and say I keep the perfect guard for later. But uh, I think because there's also no uh, I have to think though, he has attached. nothing on the board. He has nothing besides his destiny laying there. And he has I four think cards he didn't. Hand. Yeah, I think I d don't think he has something. Oh, he has. Okay, sorry. I didn't yep. think he had any support to drop off his stride, but um, I didn't see uh, his overlord in his hand, so I'm sorry for that. Yeah. So now uh, Hank does have to, you know, consider how he's going to move this turn because um, I'm not sure. I think does he have soul? I think he might be empty. But yeah, he has nothing under it. He yeah. didn't rewrite or did anything else to, for it, so... Okay, so that does turn off the Ziegenberg play for now. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, he wouldn't be able to use that if he did, because, you know, that does require a soul. So let's see what he decides to do. You know, he will have... Most strides that he goes into, he would have GB3 active as well. Yeah, true. So... Because of that um, G guard he played earlier. Yeah, exactly. Which is now so laying on the top of your screen. Yep. So let's see. 
just counting all his resources. Like for Hank, this is this might be do or die because this turn. Because I give him his five minutes. He needs to consider every possible situation. Otherwise, it's over for him. And Jesus comes out world champion if he's not doing anything right now. But yeah, uh, then having the disadvantage of, of course, he dropped um, the legend, saying, "Okay, you know what? I have three cards in my hand. Which one is the perfect card? Which he needs something to drop for." So giving him two cards, particularly in his hand. So yeah, uh, let's see what he's trying. He's still thinking of it. Yeah, I mean, this is such an important decision because. As we saw in the last game that we commentated for Hank, when he went into the purge last time, he had to bank on and like just go through so many resources trying to draw into an overlord. And he goes for the purge again. We might see a repeat of round five here. But let's see how he's going to play it out because he can still use the overlord skill. And let's see, this time he gets rid of the blast where they see it. And we're going to look at the top seven cards because right now, if he can get okay, different that let's overlord, see. Where's that this overlord? is going to be very Give important. Give me that overlord. Please, yes, he, he has an overlord. Finally, he found one. He has the legend. legend. Thank God. This might have been the first or second time that we see them actually get off yeah, the whole the day is like twice skill. that we actually saw yeah, this skill go off. We've seen but overlord so many times. If he today. didn't find one. In that situation right now, it will be over. Oh my god, Because yeah. that will be just, you know, too much. As in uh, aggression coming in back from Jesus after this turn was over. Yeah, and this turns the game into a completely different shape now. It is, it is. Because, because suddenly, going from this, like, really feeling is from going from behind. Yeah. He can now actually use the Purge's skill to force out another damage. Put, himself, put his opponent up to four. Yeah. Get himself an extra drive check more than normal. And, you know, just overall pressure. But he does have the information that uh, Jesus does have the perfect guard in hand. He did drive check that last turn. So, you know, even though he is pressuring, ooh, Give me the first that damage. is a critical, is critical, that is nullified, that is pretty big. So, let's see how he decides to Makes play Makes a 5k this one out. difference. It does. Not timing it does. So, let's see how this is gonna play out. Uh, those dice are accounting for the amount of bonus power that Glow Heater has received from his skill. So, because he does gain a 2k for each card in Jesus' damage. Of course, damage. I remember he gets four trigger checks. Because I yep. mean, four damage on Jesus' side of the field. Five would be better, but four is also possible to be enough. Solid. So, let's see. Also, of course, the 8k plus is also huge to come off as a damage. And I think he still has... No, he has some more cards now. He had three plus. He still has three the plus. Doomringer that he could that potentially true. drop. So, I'm not sure how many... Um, Overlords in the in the drop zone he has, but if he soul blasts the one from the purge skill, or rather if he or rather if he puts the one in the soul for the purge skill, um, you know at least there will be that. But I we only know well public knowledge right now that he has one overlord in the drop zone, but uh, we're gonna have to see for the rest because if he could put a second one in there, he could actually use a Doom, Doombringer skill. But for now, we're just not sure. At the time, so. Hank is thinking. Jesus yeah, is drinking off his nice tea that he has there, <laughs> ripped off the bottles. <laughs> like, the you know, poor bottle. Per, the poor bottle, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Honestly, goes, Jesus looks... Uh, there's a lot of things to consider, honestly. It is, this but is, perch first. Okay, hits off. Yep. PG, of course. Yeah, so he doesn't actually call down the Doomringer. He decides that it's not worth it. So he soul blasts uh, the one uh, spirit from his soul okay, for the cost trigger. of Gideon and doesn't nothing, have to discard. Nothing. Oh, come no. on. Nothing. The heal, yeah, heal trigger. Big. That's huge. Not only is 5K he going down plus to four. To the right lane. Yep. Plus you also have the more damage. possibility next turn. Yeah. Let's see. He still has another drive check remaining, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. So he's really considering what he wants to soul blast. Oh, not soul blast. Uh, rather heal, uh, heal off. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Heal off. So he has a, the Destiny, a Protect Orb, and a Stand Trigger. Yeah, Destiny, like honestly, okay. it's between the Destiny and the, and the Perfect Guard because do you want the Counter Charge or do you want to be able to use your skills? You like, use your skills, the yeah. To use put your it back skills. to the deck. So one more so, ooh, stand, stand Trigger. All right, 5k plus. That's going to be a pretty big glow hitter. However, it doesn't have, uh, you know, it doesn't have uh, any extra criticals. So this will simply be putting him up to 5 damage. So he gets the Barkle. That's a pretty important resource to lose, actually, for uh, Jesus. Because right now, <clears throat> that's some of the countercharging that he won't be able to use. And he once again drops the Alfred, which essentially is not that useful in this matchup because it's mainly there for the Link Joker matchups. Yeah. But that's definitely something I want to talk to him about, uh, you know, if he does possibly win. But we'll see. He goes into the Alfred. Alfredo. Let's I think go. that's honestly the optimal uh, yeah, is, stride in this situation because his opponent, he was at five. But yeah. even now being at four, it's still very, very pressuring. So we're going to have to see what he, he has, has to do. He has enough cards in his hand to go into the rush mode again. I mean, he just needs 
Left flank, maybe put that blaster right down. Right flank, maybe do something else, and then just go for the attack. Also, Hank doesn't really have much on his hand. I think no PGs anymore. So I believe he still has the one. Oh no, I'm he still has that one that he, he, that he one, didn't use yes. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So potentially, you know, that's either going to go to the Alfred or the blaster blade. It yeah, all see, left flank, right flank, all the blasters that you need. Yep. Now maybe does he boosting have the, the right. Goal? Maybe boosting the right one. Does yeah, that's what I'm what I'm thinking of. Because the flow goal is going to be make or break right now. Because with the flow goal, he would be able to, you know, uh, oh no, he's he activated the crit to pump up by 3k. He does put down the brave stand and he's going to activate the Alfred skill to discard a Liu. Ooh, that is a Liu that he's dropping. And to Persona Blast the Alfred to give his rightmost blaster blade the drive check and 3k buff. So this is going to be quite big because... Could be the same ending game. as the game before, actually. Because yeah. we also had the same situation going out and Hank is in a tight spot. Very important thing to note is that Hank has a G-Guard. Yes. He has the heal in hand, meaning he could denial Griffin the blaster blade with a drive check. And, you know, that's going to be the end of the story. And then he has a perfect guard for the Vanguard. So it's definitely yeah, of course. looking quite good for Hank. Honestly, the game is slowly but surely turning around. You know, Hank was in a pretty bad state at the start, but right now he's looking to be He managed to back recover right himself now. really well. That's really good. Yeah. So we'll see how he decides to play this out. So what would you do now? Do the G-Guard now and then PG for... Mm -hmm. Alfred? Either PG the Alfred or, you know, in any shape or form, try to uh, two to three to pass it. But we're going to have to see what he decides to do because... Because in this situation, I will not go for the kind of, no, I just try my luck and hope he's not critting something. Because then it usually comes to the point of him finding that one critical that he needs and just win, which we saw earlier. So, you know, you want to do it more defensively because it's his possibility to make a draw to a 1-1 one, one and go to a third game. So um, not taking any choices, per se, right? So Yeah, and the important thing to note as well is that there's no flow goals on the field. Yeah. Like, without the flow goals, the Blaster deck does lose quite a bit of his pressure because the thing is, he could be drive checking with both of his units and then putting up a bunch of the trigger effects on the Blaster Blade on or either Blaster Blade. But then without having those flow goals, that's just a one-time pressure. Really, They're not yeah, going to be restanding apart from the stand triggers that he plays. But with those flow goals, he would have been able to not just stack triggers on them, but also to restand. So honestly, Sasha, I think that that's quite the big loss. And, you know, that gives Hank a little bit more comfort in his moves as well. Yeah. But still has to think about everything very carefully. So Hank just going through his G-Zone. Obviously, both players know that the G-Guard possibility is there because it was drive-checked. So, yeah. Very openly. Yeah, Jesus is quite the rusher. He's getting some sort of in a sleepy mode here. He wants to <laughs> overrush his opponent. I mean, you know, both of these players have been playing since the very morning. Since the morning till now, which is almost the whole day. We've also been streaming the whole day, which yeah. is, I hope you like everybody at home. So please give a shout out to everybody here working the whole day, giving yeah. you this entire and awesome tournament. You can see Jesus just going for quick no, Jesus is stretch. just in a sleepy mode. He's like going into saving his battery life <laughs> to, to go for that rush after. Yep. So, Ooh, he all right, he put this one. Mm, okay. That's interesting. So, I would have done it the other way around, actually. We'll see what happens. Oh, he gets the heal. Ooh. That's quite big as well. That's definitely quite big. So, he goes down to four damage. And now, let's see. And the Liu. Liu. So, now he does get another Liu into his hand. Let's see how he responds to this. Oh, getting the. Uh, seems like G guard. He hovered over there. He, he hovered. hovered over that heal in his hand. Because I think one of the other things he might try to do is to use the Overlord G-Guard and to simply just nuke his back row. Because, like, in this case, if you can get rid of that back row, like, he won't be able to uh, draw the extra card from his sand trigger. Oh, yeah, you're and right. And he loses the booster for the Blaster Blade, too. Yeah. So it's not going to be hitting for uh, the magical number either. Because right now, it would be hitting for a 21 swing, if I'm not mistaken, even at this very moment. But uh, if you can get rid of that back row, it takes off that magic. It takes off that 4K, which does put it down to just 17. So that's already, you know, that's something to consider. But there are a lot of things to choose from. And, you know, we just have to see. Because for Hank, this is do or die. This is honestly... He has to go into this all-in mode. Otherwise, he cannot come back and just, you know, get it to a draw that he wants to have and go into game three. No, so I think like, he's pretty much been in the all-in mode the entire time. He, yeah, he had to. I mean, he had to. Otherwise, um, how can you go into that draw? and go into a, a third game. Of course, the audience would be happy about a third game as well. Yeah, of But uh, Hank is still hovering. <laughs> He's still thinking, mm, what do I do with my trigger? You can see... Looking through his G-Guards again. Yeah. Putting this on top. He's just being extra careful because also there is that knowledge of the stand triggers in Jesus' deck. 
And honestly, that could actually change everything because if he's not ready for those stand triggers, like. But you see God that knows. the G guy. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh. Okay, right. the Absalom is gonna come down. Okay, so he's able to protect himself with the Absalom because uh, the Absalom does gain a plus 10k shield for every unoccupied uh, rearguard early opponent has. So let's see. So this is gonna be a 36k shield. The stand trigger comes through. This is, oh, he goes all in on the Vanguard too. He has the power to the Vanguard. This is... He gets the second trigger. If he gets one more, that's going to be it. He does no, not. Okay. Also revealing... Pretty risky. Pretty that risky. That was very much a risky move. But as in greedy, risky as in... You know what? I just give everything to my wonderful Alfred and try to just win like Aichi would in Season 1. Yeah. But of course, in Season 1, we didn't have any G-Guards or G-Strides. So strides. yeah. That would be old school, going with Blaster only, but you can have everything. Yep, so he activates the Sun Triggers to get himself an extra card in hand and return it to the deck. So that's one of the nice things because it goes back to the deck all the time. Yeah. He's able to, you know, just keep banking on it every so time. So from seeing, Hank took the last damage, of course, from the left side. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, going from his Zeus view, I mean, it's a left angle. So yeah. it's now Hank's turn. He stands everything <laughs> and let's see what he draws. It really depends what he has on his hand right now. Because yeah. Well, it doesn't look... I think he can... He can Potentially stride, but it depends what he actually wants to go and with. And he has too. a soul that he can also do some stuff with. Yeah. But with Jesus being on four damage, we don't know his hands or the amount of cards in his hand, unfortunately. Yeah. But regardless, it's it's just ah, it's such a it's such a pressure situation. The crowd is also like talking to each other, like what can he possibly do to to recover or what can we do at this standpoint? Yeah, because honestly, like if he had an extra Overlord, the Purge would be a really nice one right now because he could push his opponent to five and just try to, like, you know, bank on him not having a, st uh, a perfect guard. But, you know, that's that's just one of the many considerations. But there's still options like Ziegenberg. And, you know, that could potentially be something. He does have the soul now. We have to have Ziegenberg. We didn't see one time this yeah, entire sure. day Even today. Every Overlord player, all, at least I think most of the, if not all of the Overlord players that we had today did run the Ziegenberg. But... Very interesting. We're gonna have to see how he decides to move, because, you know, like this is this is it. He's gonna okay, activate the destiny the soul, skill to get rid of the leftmost blaster, blaster blade. And let's. I see. mean, it makes sense because he has a back row as well. So you know. So, let's see. He's gonna be. He does not have the great three in his hand, so he has to obviously over overpay for stride. But that's the only way that he can actually get into it. So he drops the glow heater and the Nahalam. Yeah. But he doesn't have any choice. other choice. I mean, in this moment, he has to come he up with a plan. He had the Doomringer that he could have considered as well. But yeah. I think with the Doomringer, he might want to be recycling yeah. those Overlords yeah, 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 instead. Yeah. Because that's the reason why he healed it last turn, too. Oh, he hovers over the Axan Grave because while that would let him add cards to hand, I don't think that would help him in closing out the game, which is honestly what you would kind of try to be looking for right now. But it's such a hard scenario, honestly, because yeah, it's it just really hard for both players. Like. Jesus is in a pretty comfortable position because he did take game one and he's been showing a very consistent amount of rush just like throughout the game. And now Hank is counting his deck. He's counting the probability that he can draw into that Overlord, that he can check the top seven for that Overlord because depending on the variables, he could actually go for it and bank on getting that Overlord. He actually goes for the Purge. He's gonna bank on trying to get the last over well that one more overlord just to activate the purge, but this is such a high risk situation. But honestly, I think in order to close out the game, this is just what he might need. So he okay, activates let's see. the skill. One, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven. seven. Let's see if there's an overlord. There is a there legend. Is. There there's is a, a legend. legend. Nice. Once again, the legend answers to the call for the top seven, and now he can safely. He listens get to the, the voice of Hank. He yep. listens and says, "Okay, you know what? You gotta be a legend today. I give you one." Oh. There you go. Yeah, it's like it didn't happen to him in round five, but here he is in the. Maybe finals. he's like saying to him, "Like, I give you a chance today. Come on, for the finals, I give you the chance of fighting the legend that you need." Yep. So he's activating the Doombringer to return the two overlords to his deck. 
and he will be able to draw one extra card which could potentially give him the attacker that he still needs on the side to be able to close out the game. Think about it now. If he, if he lets um, Jesus cut his deck and then he draws another Overlord, how good in a position he could come back, having another Overlord in his hand possibly? Giving it sure just a bit more attackers, you know, because it might it, be a possibility. It depends. Yeah, it depends. It depends. There, see what there are draws. a lot of good targets he could get into. We didn't quite see that because it went too fast. It I is another a, Overlord. That was another The Legend. It was another it? The Legend, yeah. Mm. I called it. Yeah, definitely did. <laughs> I was lucky though that I called it. Let's see. Oh, this so gives him possibilities. I mean, of course, he could now play both and just try to make some damage. Yep, he's going to activate but the then, Purge's skill. Yeah, but then we don't know how much cards he has in his hand right yep. now because it's a bit stacked together. I think it must be at least five or six. Most likely. So, it's just based on the drive checks that he did last turn. So, uh, looks like it seems eight, like nine. I don't know. It's a bit hard to judge. Yeah. But so he did push. So Hank did push. Uh, Jesus to the fifth damage, and you know this is this is pretty much the dream because right here, this is this was the play that he really had to bank on because he risked so much. Yeah, but then again, going to that, um, I draw and try to find the card that I need. So it was kind of lucky that he got it yeah, because that's of course kind of you know yeah yeah. So like now it's just it's just a matter of how aggressive Hank wants to be. Yeah. Does he call down the legend? Does he just go? call out everything and just try to end it this game because we'll, we'll see. We'll he gets see. the five drive checks and then depending if his opponent has a perfect guard or not, it really Puts does that in front. He has the legend still hovering. He calls, calls it in the, the back. Trigger. Legend still in his hand. Yep. The, what, that one card which is laying face down is. on the board is the legend. Let's see. So that is an 11k line. Still not... I think honestly, mm. it might even be worth it to... Um, Oh, he does get the extra draw from the stand trigger. Yeah. And the 5k on the Doombringer. So he'll be swinging for 12k, meaning he can hit without boosting. But then we didn't see what card he drew into. But I kind of still... saw a little bit of it, but I'm not sure. So I don't want to call something wrong, as in I just want to see what he has. But you see, it's a card in the back of the Legend. Yeah, I think. More behind. So he attacks, though. So yeah. so G-guarding. Oh, into the Marin. Into the Marin. So Soul Blast to call himself a Guardian from the deck, so he can actually, if he plays the, oh, it's the Barkle. That is an interesting choice. Uh, so what some players actually do with this Jigo, they play a one of copy of one of the older perfect shields, like Isolt, yeah. that can be, that act activate its uh, perfect card skill, even if it's not placed from hand. So also to that it. way you can actually do that kind of thing. So was that a four to pass? It will four to pass. Okay, yeah. that was a four to pass. Let's see what Hank decides to do, because this is a very tense situation for both players. Let's see. There's five still five triggers. Chris, yep, we have there five are triggers. five drive checks coming through. I think possibly when Hank was uh, when Hank was doing his deck count. Let's see. The first That's one comes a through. Heal. The heal is coming through. Good opportunity here for now Hank. Now we have to see if he's actually gonna go hard and oh, and commit to the Vanguard. He's counting all of his probabilities. We can see he's going through a couple triggers in his drop zone. And so there are things to consider. He doesn't have any in his hand. He has, I believe, two in the damage zone. The probabilities. Yeah, giving okay. it to the right. More secure. Uh, more secure. It's not worth it. There's the There's draw, a draw coming through. That's definitely good as well. 5k plus. We'll go to the Doombringer. The Nahalem, There's nothing. There's the nothing. All right. What's a good call? What's okay. a good call to do it all? In the end, it was the right choice. Yeah, because otherwise he wouldn't have gone through it. Yeah, now this Doombringer attacking for a 22k swing will force Jesus to guard at least a 15k shield. Yeah. Potentially G guard as well. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, it has two cards in a sense, so maybe two, two, K, uh, two 10k shields to make it into 20k. No, yeah, it's just there. 15k is enough. Yeah. So, yeah. Also true, yeah, also true. Yeah. Now, he should be on four cards in hand. He did have another G-guard, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And now, let's just see, he does pay the Alfred for a stride, and let's see what he's going to go into. Uh, I feel like the Alfred isn't a bad choice, Yeah, Alfred, though. yeah. I think Alfred is still a good choice. There are still others, like the Myriad. I'm not sure, actually. I need to just quickly check. He does not take... He does not play the Myriad Saber. But he could still go into the... Oh, no. He only plays two copies, I believe, of Alfred. Ooh, that's... That's an interesting... He does have the Old Mile, however, that he yeah, could go say, for. Yeah, it's Old Mile possible. He has two copies of it. He can activate the Old Mile. Yeah. But I'm not sure how much that will do towards closing out the game. But he does have the Holy Squire, which is another... Well, he can't use it now. That's mainly there for the uh, Link Choker matchup. And then 
Yeah, he does still have another Gancelot, but again, that's going to be... It's hard to push for game with that kind of uh, stride, so the only other thing that he has is the GBA, but obviously that's way too early at the it moment. It is, it is, it is. But the GBA does have a lot of killing power, but he goes for the Gancelot. Gancelot. So pressuring with the critical and the extra drive check. So he's going to be asking for that perfect guard, please, if you don't mind, Mr. Hank. So calls down the Liu. And now it really depends on what else he can follow up on top of that Liu, because if he can put the Barkle behind it, that's a start. But yeah. if he can get some Flogals out there, that's even better. Yeah, it's just a big so, change if he puts that Vogel behind it. Yeah, because he will be getting the counter charge from the Gancelot. Yeah. And Boosting also, his Violin player for the 3k+. Plus. Yep, just checking his opponent's G-Zone, all the face-up units so far. And let's see. We do have the knowledge, however, the public knowledge, that Hank still has a G-Guard in hand. Yeah. Ooh, he, ooh, he calls out the Great 3 Liu. That's an interesting play. I actually was surprised by the Great 3 Liu. I think if we check, he only plays one copy of it. One single copy. And everything else is just the Blaster Blade Exceed and the Alfred. So he did buff up his uh, Violinist by 3k, making it into an 11k swing. So now Hank has to decide whether he wants to let this one through, bank on a trigger. Yeah, I mean, he has some cards in his hand. He can possibly do something against it, but possibly let that through and then take care more of the other threats yeah, which are the laying there. So Yeah, the Genslot is going to be hitting with a critical yeah. regardless. So he will take yeah, it. Yeah, takes Ooh, that damage. The Destiny, that's not exactly optimal. So now, asking for a 10k shield uh, for the Liu. You know, Hank has to decide if he wants to possibly GR this one or not, but... It's kind of hard to say. Looking at his G Guard lineup, he does play two of the Absalom, so he still has that as an option. He plays one Defeat Flare, as well as another copy of Denial Griffin, but that would only be useful in this scenario. But the Absalom, he would be able to get a 20k buff out of it, so that's something against the Genslot. And so Hank is just checking the Genslot skill just to make sure that he didn't misread anything. And checking the Liu as well, uh, just to confirm things. You can never be too careful. This is the final. The winner of we'll this best of three. World champion. I mean, that's a title, right? It's team. a title. Yeah. So you want to be sure. That goes so, to G-Guard down. Yep, and looks like he will be denial griffoning that Liu just because of those pesky stands. He does not want his opponent to just double stand his way to victory, does he? So goodbye to the grade three Liu. And here comes the Genslot counter charging one and getting an extra drive check. The Protect Orb comes down. Ooh, he drops the Legend and confirms that there's another Perfect Guard in the drop zone and is able to counter charge one. So now we got the... Ooh, a heel trigger. A heel trigger hits off. down to four. A critical. Crit. Ooh, that is bad get news. Get stand. There's another heal. If you can another get that heal. stand, this might be very big. He gets, he the, gets stand. the stand. That's trigger. very huge indeed. <laughs> and that might have just been it. That might have just been enough. This Chris, that might be, be just 30, game here. That might be just game. He hits all just triggers. And that, let us check what what is Hank. He's counting the cards in his hand. Does he have enough to guard it? He still has another the legend in his hand. The crowd is growing wild. Let's see what he decides to do because right now he has to count. He's asking for how much is on that. If there's a critical on that, because there is. He got the crit. He got the double heal and the stand. That stand is so crucial right now. This is do or die. So he has to count. He has to drop his, his entire hand if he has enough. That's just his, almost his entire hand. Yeah, but just block off that attack. I don't think he has enough. He has to take that. Yes, yeah, that damage. Jesus your world wins. champion, Herrero Jesus. Absolutely incredible performance by Jesus. That was actually incredible. Can I just to see. tell, not to be rude, but that was an worth the ending for a Royals player. That getting was, every trigger that he needs and then hitting that one stand trigger. That he was, just needs to win the entire game and become world champion. I cannot just stop punching that table, I know, man. I it's know. just so exciting. God, like, honestly, this was the final of the finals because not only did Jesus win the world championship, this is the world championship with the most players we've ever had. Yeah, and then coming out with a, let's say, a meta that we stated in the beginning, being going throughout till the end, which was either Overlord or the leader, yeah. going then into a final, which was Kai versus Aichi, and Aichi Jesus comes out <laughs> victorious, and then of course going to a state of, I am a royal, I just 
crit and hit every trigger that I possibly can and winning. You know what? That is kind of like a really awesome ending. As it's in, incredible. It is the ending you wish for as a player exactly. and a viewer to the stream. It's like, how can you end more awesome than that? I know. Like, imagine entering into this tournament, one of the only, if not only, I don't know the statistics, but he might have been the only Blaster player. I think there were like the two, too. maybe, or three. Like, he's one of the very, lower, very few. Um, what say, lower mentioned clans, as in, he's not so mentioned like the others, as in, everybody's just saying, I met so many Link Jokers today, I met so many uh, over lords today and then coming through like i said in the beginning that shows how vanguard can be different from other yeah. games as in you never know what's coming out at the end yeah and then he hits every trigger he needs just perfectly ended that match. yeah honestly big congratulations to both players honestly not to take away from hank's achievements either getting to second place is really amazing and he played yeah. very well especially that last turn when he had to bank on everything for that destiny was just amazing to see but jesus Prove to us that honestly, this is what it takes to be the world champion of the 2017 BCS Grand Finals. So we're gonna wait for Jesus to come to the stage and get his prize. Then we're gonna head over to the yep. stage again, so you can see the winners, and then we will have an interview with Jesus, of course. Um, we have a lot of questions. Thoughts. You have a, lot, a of questions. lot of questions to be asked, I think. And of course, I let, I let Chris do the honors and asking him <laughs> all the questions. No, I have also some questions. So. So, um, Jesus is not here yet, so... But still, like, honestly... All, yeah, continue, please, I'm sorry. Just recapping on the event as a whole. Like, this please. has been such a amazing finals. It's actually just incredible to see. So, yeah. so just apologize for the small uh, interruption, but honestly, like, just recapping on the finals. Oh, we can see Jesus actually walking through the crowd with his fist raised, the champion for today's event. But honestly, recapping on the whole event, this was an amazing final. It was overall. really awesome. I think the, a number of players, the location, the players were all so friendly and happy to each other. As in, I see people that I never met before. We had some yeah. awesome matches. Some sad overlords not hitting that seven like checkups. Yeah. I mean, it was sad, but then it was giving that kind of, how should I say? It gave you that opportunity of feeling a bit nervous as in does he still can come back yeah, after exactly. this? I mean of course he doesn't just only have to go into the state of I need my overlord to win because there are other possibilities but it gives you that kind of Ooh, what does come next does he have an answer to that because of course overlord is quite huge you need that it's yeah exactly deck types. and so, honestly like know. bringing blasters to an overlord heavy format might have been the best choice because yeah. blasters don't really struggle that hard with all the superior calling that they can do. Yeah, also in the beginning we said the Lito might be the one going into the end of the day, sort of, but then now we have, of course, Kagero coming in, which was kind of imaginable going with the numbers of players who played Kagero, yeah. but then Royals, unexpected, going through the whole day because, like um, Chris said, we had six top eight overlords. overlords. Where you think, of course, you know what, we're just gonna go with the top four just overlords, but then we had the same for Wise, where one was not Attack on Titan, it was Konosuba, sadly not going to the finals, but yep. then of course we had that. And for Buddy, Buddy Fight was also similar. We yeah, had but Buddy Fight four, was the end. Chaos yeah, Buddy Fight was the end of matchup though I was hoping for, as in yeah. we have the two meta decks going yeah. against each other. But it showed Bats is coming to the table, the game is over. Because exactly. Bats is just not, that's why Bats is a mascot, because Bats is just this huge amount of dragon. Yeah, the moment he hits the Killing field, Killing everybody. The opponents just concede, so... Yeah. Yeah, that and is luck and logic, yeah. Sad that Max didn't have a chance to win for Europe. He had, didn't have sadly one European winning today as being the first place, but, yeah, but he we was didn't second. Have a European in the top four. Of That's Vanguard. true. For Vanguard, we had, yeah, we had Nuno, Nuno Raimundo from Portuguese who won yep. uh, Portugal. Sorry, the Portuguese who Shout won to the Portuguese community yeah, who won in France against Robert Phillips, who we know, for example, also really well from the communities and yeah. um, also came out as a it's Gear Chronicle winning in France and now coming back here with Overlord. Sadly, not making it into the top final. But also, I have to say, as uh, watching the top four, otherwise we will have Hank against jo Josh Lee again, yeah, which yeah. will be like a same matchup as earlier. Five, so yeah, yeah. Um, so. I mean, from from an audience standpoint, um, it would be boring to have the same matchup again as in round five all over that's again. True, so true. that was a bit more interesting for the audiences to watch as well. But of course, Blasters is rush heavy, so yeah. of course that's why G uh, Jesus gave him this huge kind of. I go into your face straight away, hitting that logo, hitting that blasters, just going into your face, and yeah. so on. And so. managed to close out the game 2-0. Honestly, an amazing achievement by Jesus. And, you know, I can't wait for us to be able to interview him as well, because yeah. 
this is an amazing achievement. He's gonna go down in history as the winner of the 2017 World Championships. Yeah, that's Honestly, true. It's just an amazing feat. It is, so it is, it is. We should, we're going to see the winner see ceremony guys. for Card 5 Vanguard World Championship Finals, and then we're going to have an interview with Jesus after that. Stay tuned.